So hi guys and welcome back to the Honey Podcast. I'm Danny and this is Bibi and today we will be buzzing over a very special guest. Joining us today is Rena and she is the lead vocalist and bassist from the band Hey Violet. Uh, we just want to say a huge thank you for joining us and welcome to the Honey Podcast. Thank you guys so much for having me. I appreciate it. Of course, of course. So we like to always jump in right away with this question um, when we have musicians on the show. We just would love to hear about um, what was like your defining moment in life that you knew you wanted to pursue a career in music? Ooh, um, I, my sister and I grew up with my parents always being around music. My mom was a singer. Um, my dad would play piano and sing and, you know, mix my mom's songs and all of that. Um, so I knew that I was, I knew I wanted to do something with music from a super early age. Um, I picked up guitar or no, I picked up drums first with my sister and then I moved on to guitar. Then I moved on to bass, <laughs> but I realized about, you know, probably five years ago or so that like singing you know I loved playing bass but singing mm -hmm. was really my passion like that's really where it it lied for me and so I I knew it would always be something about music again from very early on my mom did it I was like oh my god that's so cool and it. like <laughs> so beautiful and I was like really like I idolized her and uh so it was less like, oh, this is the defining moment. It was just what we were brought right. up in. So it was like, it, it came naturally. A whole lifetime of music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. That's awesome. So you went through all those instruments. I mean, of course, I've got to ask, which, which one's your favorite? Um, I really, I always find myself wanting to play guitar better. Yeah. Um, because mm -hmm. I've, you know, sometimes I'll start a chord progression on guitar, but I don't know all of the you know music theory and all of that and like the seventh sus chords I'm like <laughs> I don't know I'm just gonna do straight power chords um right. so I always find myself wanting to know more guitar and liking when I fiddle around on that the most um bass always feels very good to me it's just very driving and all of that mm -hmm. but I think it'd be really nice to I just have a I have a a I'm more, more attracted to the guitar yeah. sound and like being yeah. able to write on it and stuff. I totally understand that. I have said this before on the podcast, as much as I love music, I cannot play music at all. <laughs> like yeah. it's horrible. <laughs> I, I actually have a guitar sitting over here that I got for like my 14th birthday um yeah. and I learned one song and that was it <laughs> and it was That's smoke. What you need. <laughs> it was smoke I learned smoke on the water like yeah. obviously <laughs> and that's all I ever learned to play and now it just sits here and like looks at me and people come over <laughs> and like oh you play and I'm like no <laughs> it's just the core now like yeah. I have one I learned how to play like the very first part of the Harry Potter intro and that's oh, that's so much better all than I know <laughs> that's all you need to know no my first week of of my like guitar lessons and stuff I learned eight days a week by the Beatles and smoke on the water yeah Th that's like the foundation yeah like, you know those, you're, you're good you're set, you're set for like average guitar playing that's like me every time I pick up a guitar I'm like I know like three things on this and that's what I'll always do. Yeah. Like, it's just like, <laughs> burr, burr, burr. that's all I do. <laughs> this is my party trick. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Is there any instrument that you haven't played that you would like to? Um, that I haven't played that I'd like to. I've tried a lot of different instruments just because we always have to go into uh like a music store to get any gear like before tour and stuff like that um like I've messed around with like a harp before and what are those things called a bassoon or something like just random stuff I'm yeah. horrible at all of them but I'm <laughs> trying to think what I would really love to um oh man I don't think there is it's like the main instruments that I really want to learn are like piano and guitar which I've oh, obviously piano. tried before but like those are the main ones that I'm like I actually like will look up little YouTube tutorials on like the piano and all of that I feel like those are just like the foundational 
things that I'm like, I really, and, and what sucks is like my parents actually put me in lessons for piano and you know how, like when they put you in lessons that immediately you, you just hate, you them. don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, so it was like, damn it. Like, I wish I like understood that I'd really want to right. have done that later in life, but it's okay. I'll like tell my younger self when I can try. Yeah. That. <laughs> Piano <laughs> is such a beautiful instrument. I yeah. always feel like I, always, that would be my one that I would want to learn, but I don't have the hand eye coordination for it or anything. So I know Mia, my, my sister, she's the drummer of our band and she's like, every limb is moving. moving. And I'm like, um, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I mean, I, I, I move on my limbs just in a different way. I'm not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I have a big appreciation for drummers. I think like they move their hands so fast. I will never understand how oh my I, God, no. they're amazing. An art form for sure. Yeah, definitely. So, um, Hey, Violet has been in the scene for quite a while. Uh, mm -hmm. what are some changes that you've seen in the industry with like positive and negative? Hmm. Um, I've definitely changed in the industry. That's a really good question. I like your guys' questions. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I think that the industry is shifting in a good way towards um, a little bit more of an equal playing field, you know, in terms of uh, gender norms and all that stuff, or not gender norms, but just like gender overall. Um, obviously, they're, they're, it, it's like known that, I mean, females tend to have a harder time kind of being taken seriously or whatever it is. It's just been um, a little more difficult in that regard, you know, even just a few years ago when it was like, you know, women need to step up. It's like, hey, we've, we've been working hard all this time um, and for like generations and generations. So, but I have noticed a big shift in like that people, people are a little more respectful nowadays there's still a lot of there's still a long way to go of course but I do notice that um there are uh I guess like we're giving credit where credit is due you know it's not like this woman got famous because you know he helped to get her there or you know this the xyz you know signed her or whatever it's like no she's a hard-working woman and we're gonna like acknowledge that so I definitely noticed that a little bit more there's still of course a lot of people that don't acknowledge it, but I just know that when we started, you know, we were a underage. So people were like, Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Granted, a lot of the times we did, a lot of times we didn't, you know, we were still <laughs> learning who we were, right. but I, but I did notice that kind of like condescending tone and, uh, you know, my sister and I are female, you know? Um, so having both of those, uh, traits, I guess, was, uh, it, it was difficult at times, but again, I've noticed a good shift um, in that. I'm trying to think how it's changed badly. Um, I never really, I mean, I don't really like to say that the music industry is like oversaturated because I love that people are sh sharing their art um, and it's, it's very much more accessible to, you know, there's a million songs uploaded online every single day. And I think that's awesome, but I do tend to um, see that there's a lot of people trying to do what other artists have already done. Um, but you know what, like they're expressing themselves. Like, I don't really consider that a negative. I think it's just like, it's cool that people can get their stuff out there. So yeah, those are the main things that I've noticed. Um, yeah, definitely easier to be heard in yeah. terms of being a woman. That, I mean, that is always great to hear. And it's definitely a reoccurring um, topic for us on the Honey Podcast is women in the industry because we are women in the industry um, and we've been lucky enough to have a lot of great, awesome women on our show, um, which you already answered one of my next questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, since you've already told us, you know, like what it's like to be a woman in the industry and some of the difficulties that you've seen. What is um, like a piece of encouragement or advice that you could give to females entering in the, into the industry? Um, I would say don't let anybody make you question your values. Um, and and I, I mean that in that, you know, sometimes people will say, oh, you know, just do this. It doesn't matter if it's not true to you. Like it's what's marketable or whatever, you know, like mm. the business kind of ended stuff. And, and while I understand the business side of like keeping to a brand and like all of that stuff, 
there, there is a level of integ artistic integrity that you have to have to, you know, just kind of make sure that you're, you are being true to yourself and you're not like selling yourself short for something that is not like it, it won't bring you longevity to just be like, I'm so marketable and like, blah, right. blah, blah. It, it's not, it's not um, genuine, you know, but I would say that, you know, if people are struggling with being a woman in the industry, I would just hope that they know to find other women that can support and encourage them. I think that's huge because everyone, every woman in the industry and like a lot of men, they know the struggle. Like mm -hmm. they know that it's not, it's not always fair. Um, but having a really great support system that understands what you're going through and like you can talk to about that is super important. I'm like really lucky to have my sister in the band because if someone says some sideways shit on Zoom, we're like looking at each other like that, you know, <laughs> like, like, like feel like other people get it, you know? Yeah. Um, but I would really just say like stick. St I know this is like so um it's like kind of typical to say, but it is so important to stay true to like what you feel is right for your project. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, you know, they'll try and mold it to be more commercial or whatever. And while some of that is totally fine and, you know, it's good for the brand identity, I guess, um, there is still, you know, I think there's a way to take that too far to where it's like, I don't even know who I am anymore. Right. Um, so definitely just like, staying true to yourself. I love it. <laughs> Couldn't be more perfect advice, honestly. And there is a lot of, there's a lot of, there is a lot more women in the industry and it's so important for them to know that. And especially for the younger women in the industry. So awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, hey, Violet has been support for some really awesome bands. What have been some of your favorites? Ooh, um, I mean, I think even just starting out going on tour with five seconds of summer was really cool um, because we were kind of like, I mean, we were, we were playing arenas and like all of that. I mean, that's just like an experience that you can't, you can't even, it's like immeasurable um, in terms of like just how wild it was. Um, I think that opening for Olivia O'Brien was really cool too. I, I really... Her fans were very, very sweet. Um, I just think she has like such a beautiful voice. Um, so that was really cool as well. And then, I mean, I'm, there were just like so many times, my personal favorite was going to Japan and we were opening for Five Sauce again. But I just like remember walking down the streets on off days and just feeling very like connected to like, my surroundings and just very um in awe of how cool it was and I don't know I was just like walking on cloud nine when we were in Japan I just felt very nice and we got to see like some of the uh famous buildings there and historical stuff and um I always like that stuff I feel like some people get really bored of hearing like oh my god I'm the person that like reads everything in a museum about like what the artist was trying to convey and like all oh, that yeah. stuff so <laughs> Yeah, I, I just like learning as much history as possible on tour, um, just about the places that we're playing from the venues to the city itself and like stuff like that. So I always try to like immerse myself in the culture. Japan, where, I can only imagine how incredible that was. It was it was really, really wow. cool. I, I want to I want currently I'm learning Spanish, but I want to learn Japanese eventually. Awesome. I <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure like I, I took Italian in high school and I did not retain any of it. Like I am so, hard. I'm so jealous of people who are bilingual, trilingual. Um, it's amazing. I, it's insane. BB, you are one of them. No, <laughs> so. not yet. I will, I would not say I'm bilingual yet. I'm like in the very, like, <laughs> I'm in like basic, basic conversation. Um, I'm learning a lot more, but I haven't retained it all yet. So like even two years of doing, I, I did French. I know nothing. Oh my I, gosh. I can't remember anything. So Me neither. three years of Italian. Yeah. And the only thing I learned was hello. And like, I know what tall and, and fat are. And that's there you the go. Only, <laughs> that's I'm like all, that. With you're set, Italian. man. You're set. <laughs> that's the only thing I ever learned. The only thing I ever learned. <laughs> I took three years of French. Didn't learn anything. Yeah. So yeah. now they then say I that's moved a super difficult language, French. Yeah. And then I moved to Italian because I was like, oh, it's so close to Spanish. 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 Like, 
it's gonna be fun and <laughs> no I was so wrong yeah. I was so wrong it's Why? crazy it's so intricate with like verb changing and everything yeah. it's just so wow and and like English is a cakewalk honestly compared to other languages I really I've heard that it was like one of the most difficult languages to learn really I, I can't like imagine I don't know I'm, I don't, I, I don't I would either. think it's easy to learn it, but I learned it when I was three years old. So I right. I learned to talk like I grew up talking English. So I feel like that's like it it wasn't hard for me, I guess. Totally. Because of that. But maybe it is hard for other people. I, I don't know. I feel like we, we have so many rules and yeah, so that's true. Break those rules. But <laughs> oh, Spanish like- has, I think, probably like Spanish, French like latin language have yeah. oh my gosh so many rules so many rules like it's like yeah it's crazy it's, it's like polarization. it's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at least i feel like the rules in spanish and italian and things like that make sense like english rules just half of them don't even make sense and like right. you say they totally contradict one another so i would like... say french doesn't make sense because like there's words like oh you're not like the rule says this But in this word, it doesn't apply. And you're like, yeah, yeah. you know what? <laughs> like, man, I can't win here. I just have, like, so I'm, I'm again. I've like taken a couple years, uh, about a year of Spanish now, but I'm still like just getting comfortable conversationally and like mm-hmm. just the beginning stuff. So I'm like, all right, I, I don't You'll get there at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully. What I've heard is, um, like Asian is like any Asian language is easier for some reason. I would say, I would think it's harder because some of them, well, most of them have like a different like alphabet. So I would think Mm -hmm. it's harder, but a lot of people who learn like Korean or Japanese or Chinese, they say like, oh, it's easy. It's easier than learning Italian. And I'm like, wow, that doesn't make much sense. Right, that I would never think that, but it's- Maybe their rules are like just more consistent. Right? Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, probably. It makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. So talking about tours and concerts, now that uh, COVID is finally lifting up a little and concerts are coming back, is there anything coming soon from Hey Violet? Yeah, we're actually, it, it's kind of nice seeing that there's like a little little bit of light at the end of the tunnel with the whole, whole COVID stuff, like stuff is starting to open up again. Everyone's kind of like re-dipping their toes into the water. They're like, you know, it's just nice to be able to see that things may go back to normal after hopefully, hopefully after a few months, but we'll see. Um, we don't have any shows or tours scheduled yet, but there are like talk, there's some talk in the works of like possibly doing a, an end of the year tour or beginning of next year, nothing set in stone, but we are just like on the, on the edge of our seats, just like wanting to get out again and go on tour. because that's really like I think where we feel most at home. I know for me, like I get up on stage and I'm like, oh, this feels right. This is it. <laughs> yeah. So, and just seeing all of the fans after the shows and stuff like that, I just, I miss it so much. I can't yeah. even describe it. I know as fans, we've said it time and time again, and we even had a full episode dedicated to it, <laughs> how much we miss live shows. So we are right there with you for sure. But, but being on that other end, what are, what are some tours that have been announced that you really want to catch um, in the upcoming year and a half? So what's weird is I've seen a lot of tours not being announced, but being announced that they're getting postponed. So I'm not (laughs) sure yet, but I know that I'm not sure if she's announced a tour yet, but I definitely like, I need to see Billie Eilish live eventually. I have to just, I think she's amazing. Um, I I saw Dua Lipa like two or three years ago. So I'd be down to see her again. I bet yeah. like her stage show is like, awesome. you know, love and everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But Billy is like, really, I just would love to see her live. I think, I don't know. I just think everything she does is so dope. So I'd be, I'd be really excited to see her. How about mm-hmm. you guys? Have you heard of any tours happening? <laughs> that, like the inside scoop or whatever? Not not necessarily inside scoop, I would say, but there are definitely a couple that uh, we talked about that I know I'm excited for. Um, I <laughs> I really like was into Justin Bieber's like recent album. Um, yeah. I loved that. So like I I never really was a big fan, and I'm about to do what I always do and bring up the fact that I love pop punk. So yeah. I like that's totally out of my realm of like 
artists I would naturally see. So right. I'm really excited to see him. Um, and I like recently because of the honey pop and I'm like geeking out over about it over here. So like, it's embarrassing, but um, <laughs> young yeah. gravy, I'm super into young oh, gravy cool. and like, he just in, announced his rescheduled tour. And like, mm-hmm. I have to go to that. Cause I just heard his stage show is like, and his like, it's just so fun. And okay. it's again, totally out of the realm of like what I usually go see. So I'm like really excited <laughs> for those two. So cool. And of course um, I'm a really big fan of the wonder years when I go see them yeah. again, they haven't announced anything yet, but yeah, honestly, I like just, I just lived for shows before this. So yeah. I I've would be down to go to like anything. a really, yeah, anything at <laughs> yeah. this point. I'm like, I don't care yeah. if it's just a lounge bar. Like a yeah, lounge literally bar. any live music I, I'm there for. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I am super excited for Five Seconds of Summer. They just postponed right. their tour, so I'm excited about that. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, I was going to Billie Eilish, uh, but she canceled her tour. Yeah. I did see her at a music festival here in Mexico. How She's was it? In- It, she's incredible just the, the energy in the concert was insane yeah no uh I hope she definitely does a tour because I want to see her live more because she's too. amazing for sure I also like just about the Justin Bieber's album I heard I wa- I listened to it all the way down that's a good ass album it, it really- is it is It is. And I, I explained this um, on a previous episode, but uh, for, for the website, we actually, I had the opportunity to like cover his live show and it was so good. I was like, damn, I like hadn't like really checked in and on him since like that he put out his movie when he like, right. you know, like, what was that believe? Like, yeah, I don't even know. Mm-hmm. I don't exactly. I, and I'm telling you, I like, he did this live, which <clears throat> it's available on YouTube. Like I didn't have to pay anything for it, but it, I was just like, Oh my God, who is this? He's a, an adult now. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I, and it was so good. It was so good. I have to, I have to, I'll have to see him live. I've never seen him live and I do. I'm not like an avid follower. Right. But- I heard that album and I was, I was really impressed. Right. Um, that album alone got me. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And we're of gonna, course, we're going to eventually be like walking infomercials for Justin Bieber. Yeah, <laughs> it's seriously, I mean, it's a reoccurring theme for, for me, a lot of topics and which I'm going to segue into bringing up Machine Gun Kelly, because obviously <laughs> we have to, um, but of course he's another one I really want to see. Um, oh yeah. But his tour is completely sold out, I think. That's um, awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. except for um, Firefly Festival, which actually happens in Delaware, which is where I'm based out of. So maybe I'll catch that. But yeah, <laughs> BB, said, yeah. BB yeah. pretty much told me I had to. So I'm like, like I, you have to go because I can. So you have to go for it. Yeah, I'm going to have to take one that. for the team and go yeah, to that it's, one. It's, it looks amazing. Like the lineup. Like I, Eilish, Yeah, I was going to say, I think Billie Eilish is also Kelly, on that. Um, Liz, or I think Lizzo, Lizzo. I think so, yeah. Um, it's I a think, three-day festival, so it's a yeah. lot going on, but I feel like it, I've, I've been told I've had to go. So. <laughs> like, I <don't> <laughs> <to> go. <laughs> yeah, I guess I have to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> That's so cool. But I mean, like we said, I, regardless, I'm just super excited for, um, for music to come back. It's going to be great for both the artists and the fans, which segues into my next question. Um, Hey, Violet has been super engaging with fans. Um, you guys actually have a discord. How is that working out for you guys and for fans? And why do you find this type of engagement with your fans so important? Um, it's been really great on the discord. Nia, uh, she started, she made this whole Hey Violet hotel. Um, I think that it's really cool because obviously through Twitter, Instagram, like all the regular social media, um, you kind of see other people talking about similar stuff, but there's no real, like, like, here's a chat for this. Here's a chat for this. Mm -hmm. And like, if you go in DMS, it's not like you can really organize them. It's just like, whatever is most recent, like with who messaged or whatever. So what, what Nia did in the discord was she has all of these columns of basically 
this is a chat for astrology. This is for people, you know, struggling with this. This is mm-hmm. for food chat or like whatever it is. Yeah. And so <clears throat> that's something that we really like about it is that, you know, yes, our, our fans can talk obviously on social media, but this really gives them um, a place to feel feel safe. And like, that's something really big in our, in our whole like fandom, fan club, whatever, is that people just feel like, really safe, really heard and like connected to each other. Even if like, there's people that don't agree, like you have different, you have different chats. It has to be respectful, like all of that stuff. And we found that that was really nice within the uh, ultraviolet fandom, because I mean, again, there's just not really like a place to do. I feel like Twitter yeah. very really gets a little angry or like, again, the group chats themselves, like aren't um organized in that way so they came on there and you know we got we got a really good amount of people that feel very uh connected through it and so it's been going really well I think that it's just like another another way for us to connect with the fans and another way for them to connect with each other that is great I mean we use discord for our um our work so and it's great in that aspect so I can only imagine how awesome it is for fans to have yeah. and especially those breakdowns of different stuff like food and astrology yeah. <laughs> like I love that that's great I mean it makes it much more organized and then it's like totally. it, it gives them a safe space to talk about literally anything that they want to absolutely we also like Nia and I will go on there and and we'll be like does anyone want to play among us? So then we're just like playing. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's like, great. Yeah. Really fun. <laughs> awesome. I, and you know, like that is so important for fans. Um, and I think that artists like you and a lot of others have been so great with, um, COVID it's given like such an uh, awesome opportunity to, um, provide these types of things, this, these interactions with fans, like there's mm-hmm. been so much more of a, like, relationship with fans and artists I feel like through COVID and I think that it's really been eye-opening for both fans and like artists to see Mm -hmm. like the behind the scenes and like all that stuff so yeah hopefully that's something that you guys will be able to keep up once touring and everything starts (laughs) we'll be on discord after the show like what do you guys have (laughs) so what do you guys think (laughs) I love it (laughs) I I've been a part of a few um different artists discords um yeah I think it's really special when the artist themselves is like active on it because a lot of the time I mean it's again still a great opportunity and space for people to um like talk fans to get together and talk but it's not as often that they get to like interact with the artists themselves totally. yeah so that's like super yeah fun. that's something that's really important for us is to be able to like actually talk directly to the fans um we had a team jump on recently that they were like do you want us to like learn your online voice and and you know have us have us reply for you and I understand why people do that you guys are busy um and and if they're able to reply to the fans I think it shows a level of engagement but it's really important to us that it's us um so yeah that's just always like meant a lot to us when we do questionnaires like we're the ones answering of course you know so yeah that makes it so much better. Like that makes yeah, me so happy to hear. And again, it's so like, awesome. I, understand, I right. understand when people do it the other way, but for us, it's just like, that's just, who that's our core. Are. That, those yep. are our people. Like, <laughs> love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And I think it, it makes the music more special to the fans totally. to have, like this connection with the actual artist. It just, mm-hmm. For me, it changes a lot. I'm in a bunch of discords of different artists who actually are like there. Really awesome. Cool. I just feel like their music is more like, and I feel more connected with their music. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I totally agree. So, uh, Hey Violet has been super fashion forward. I love your style. You. Uh, is there any chance that there might be a Hey Violet inspired fashion line someday? I- I would love to do that. Yeah, I, I, I would not say no to that. Um, I really am, I'm very into fashion. I was, um, I took like one of those master classes on uh, the Diane Furstenberg, her whole like, just all about the brand and all like, it's, it's just very intriguing to me. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not a very good drawer, but I like to like, 
when I have an idea, I'm like, oh my God, and there could be like this outfit that has like this. I don't know. I just, it's very meticulous. And I really yeah. like that because I'm, I'm very much like, well, it's all in the details and all of that stuff. Um, I would be super open to doing our own like, hey, Violet clothing line. That would I, be I think awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I would there's love to see that. there's yeah. nothing in the works yet, but I noticed like, I don't know. I just like, I love I love our style. Like, I'm not trying to like toot our own horn or whatever, but I really do. Like, <laughs> it's I, good. Yeah, right, seriously. Um, I would be very open to doing that. I think that'd be awesome. And we also like have been talking about like maybe doing a makeup collab or makeup wow. kind of yeah. Sort. Like we just were very Nia and I always do our own makeup and like um, people seem to like it. I, yeah. I, I <laughs> So I, I think that would be really awesome to just collaborate with somebody on either a palette or something. My cat's joining us, so. Oh, of course. We love animals around here. We love it. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, I'd be down for sure. I would love to see it. <laughs> Me so, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got two <laughs> buyers already, okay? Yeah, you already got two. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That would be great, great. And I do have to ask, what kind of hair dye do you use? Because your hair always looks amazing. Oh my God. I use, um, oh my God, what's it called? Pravana. Oh, nice. Um, I was like, I love her hair. I used to have thank pink you. hair. Thank you. I had purple what hair. To it? We could have matched. I know, I know. Um, <laughs> well, it like died because I dyed it so much <laughs> yeah. during COVID. I literally had green, blue, light blue purple and pink um yeah. and I had a great time with it but yeah. I I had to give it a break because it yeah, was just seriously. it's so short now it was long and everything but I had to just give it a break so <laughs> I have never dyed my hair oh my ever. gosh but you have beautiful beautiful I, I have dyed gorgeous. it but like just blonde uh and just like the tips of it I would yeah. love to dye it like a crazy color one oh my day. gosh it's so fun but I just think it's hard because it's it's so dark hair and I would have to bleach it a lot so yeah. like color is there what color, what color would you want to go I would try I want to try red for some reason it's it's oh, always so good there. I love red I and they always have those memes about girls with red hair being crazy and yeah, I am yeah. crazy. I know. Yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> totally am. <laughs> that's so funny. I um I started going to this hair guy who now I'm thinking, I'm like, did he use Bravana? I think he used something else. But if I find out, I will definitely let you guys know. Oh, yes, please. Um, <laughs> I think the colors were like pink flamingo and pink, but I can't remember the company name, which is like the most important part. But um so I started going to him and he doesn't use any heat on my hair at all. Yeah. Um, and it's been really like a lifesaver for me because everyone's always used heat when I put oh, on yeah. bleach and stuff. And then my, my hair falls out like mm -hmm. way more excessively than having not bleached it with, uh, with heat. And so I noticed like when I was doing the heat, I'd come out of the shower, my hair would dry, but then I'd be like shedding all yeah. day. Um, and now it doesn't do that. It That's does it awesome. like a little bit just because bleach, but like right. <laughs> it lifts on its own. And I'm like, ah, this is so much better. So, so much better. Yeah. Uh, I'm literally going to give it a little bit more time, but I, I'm really itching to get those colors back, honestly. I definitely will have to try it. One yeah. Day. Like, We're just going to oh, pop up and BB's going to have red hair. It's going to be a, a whole thing. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. <clears throat> so you have been like super open and honest in your creation of music. How has that um, been ben beneficial for both the band and for your fans? Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely kind of try to dig as deep as, as humanly possible. Um, uh, so sorry, my cats are playing with my <laughs> um, Uh Yeah, when we're in writing sessions, I really just try to call upon um, sorry, I really just try to call upon like what, what I'm feeling in the moment, whether that's good, bad, uh, sad, happy, whatever. Um, and I think that that translates really well into a song just because I feel like, you know, we could be writing like really happy songs all the time, but that's just not authentic to like anyone's human experience we have good days we have bad days and and that's okay um 
I've I've definitely really tried to touch on, especially with the new music that's going to be coming out. Um, I've struggled with like depression and anxiety for most of my life. And I really wanted to touch on those things because I feel like it um, with our first album, I feel like a lot of the songs that we wrote were almost like the like the aftermath of my untreated mental illness and like the problems that kind of came with that. But I never really got to write a song about like just how shitty it is to be going through it at all, you know? Um, And I think a lot of these songs really touch on that and are able to kind of convey that you essentially like feel really trapped in your mind sometimes. And as well as not even, not even just mental illness, but like relationship issues, friendship issues, um, just like, really any and obviously like not all the songs are super heavy sometimes they're just very like um powerful or anthemic like about feeling a little more confident stuff like that but I really think that that conveys the human experience in a much more authentic way because it's not reasonable that someone would be happy all day every day 24 7 like yeah that would be like great it's just not it's just not um I guess it's not relatable to an extent. It's just like, I, I wouldn't relate to someone who was happy all day every day. I'm like, Oh, they're, they're on something. Yeah. And I, don't, I don't, I don't get that. Oh. But I feel like our fans really relate to, relate to that too. Cause I think that we, we, we live in a society that is often like can be really dismissive of mental illness or of even just having a bad day. It's like, Oh, like what's going, like, it's very stigmatized. Whereas that should be really normalized because people do struggle with mental illness and a lot of other things. And, you know, I, I want our fans to know specifically that we're, you know, we support their journey of like getting help if they choose to, and that, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. Like, it's not that they're like bad or not normal or whatever, like they're just the way that they are. And that's perfectly okay. And I hope that they feel safe in our fan fandom, you know? Yeah. I, that's like also, again, a reoccurring theme that we kind of have on the show as well. Um, And it's one that we've talked about time and time again, it's so important to have like music like that out there. And it's so awesome. It's so awesome that it's not a taboo topic anymore you know like the people go through these things and it's just awesome to have these voices out there that are like getting it out there and are yeah. there for fans to relate to it's just amazing honestly so Absolutely. big ups to you guys for that thank you of thank course you. yeah I think um just you know like artists be- that you like follow and stuff opening up about this just makes you feel more secure and more yeah. like in a safe place and I think it's amazing that they do it because it, I feel like it definitely has helped me and I'm sure it has helped a lot of people out there so yeah while we enjoy those happy songs sometimes you just yeah, sure. you just can't be like you can't feel like that all the time yeah I mean I, and I think that it gives like it gives the opportunity for like a, an album of ours to be literally the soundtrack for somebody you know Mm -hmm. a lot of our fans are like oh you know I listen I listen when I'm happy I listen when I'm sad like because that's how that's how humans are you know um but I do love that you mentioned like there is more of a conversation about it nowadays because I'm really happy that there is and like there's more of even like Billy opening up about you know, a lot of the stuff that she's endured in in the industry and in relationships and stuff like that I think that that's really powerful because it's shedding light on things um that used to kind of just be swept under the rug yeah. and and then that that just makes the suffering even worse you know opening the conversation is like really healing yeah it gives voice it gives a voice to people that like didn't have one before so totally. it's awesome and it's especially important I think in all aspects, but we've definitely talked about how important it is for um, men in the industry to open up about this as well. And so that's awesome to see it too. Like, it's been amazing. And I think we, this year alone has done great monumental things for music. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. So um, as we start to break, like out of the pandemic and we had like, we're, we're seeing 
like you said um how did you like take time in the isolation to keep the like hey violet going on and relevant and like keep keeping them going yeah i mean when when the pandemic first started um it was i was actually going through a really rough time in terms of my mental health and just feeling really isolated like we all were um and so we honestly took a little bit of a break um knowing we obviously still wanted to do music we weren't on like hiatus but uh i really needed a second to just care for myself and um and that really that really blossomed into like some incredible songs that we have coming out because we got to we got to go into the studio with a producer and you know the he's doing our whole album and so we really got to just open up during these writing sessions and just talk about basically what 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 we've all gone through but like specifically what I went through uh for the past few years and just struggling with trying to find stable ground you know um it just kind of I always felt very rocky and like all my relationships were super tumultuous and um and it was really really difficult because it it was just that I wasn't happy with myself and I really have to I'm still finding that peace but like it's a lot less uh erratic you know and like it's kind of nice to be able to find that stable ground once in a while and just be like you know able to breathe and able to be grateful for the things around me rather than stuck in my own head and like over analyzing overthinking and like making up lies about myself or about my life like whatever so when we got into the studio it was really therapeutic to be able to just let it all out in these songs um so i think that you know in terms of like keeping our fans engaged and stuff like that we'd obviously still talk to them online but i think it was like really imperative that we did take some time away because now we're kind of coming back and we love these songs you know like our like if they're our own babies and it really tells a story of like being able to find myself again essentially you know it's like just kind of like being able to reintroduce myself and obviously again like not every day is happy I don't want it to be like this arc of like I was shitty you know I was you know hurting myself and now everything's better because it's like <laughs> mental illness is like three steps forward two steps backward like it just comes and goes and like every day is kind of like that so I just it was more important to me that I took care of myself and knowing that it would eventually be essential to the process of being in Hey Violet that I was okay and that I could translate that if the fans are not okay that's okay and we're going to support them too you know it's such an incredible journey to hear you like talk about it in that sense because it's everyone that ever deals with mental health issues has goes through that so it's like for me as a someone that also deals with it it's incredible to hear you like say that journey and how important that journey is because it really is and people, people don't understand sometimes that like, it's an ongoing journey. It's, and totally. especially, especially for artists, um, I think as well, like people get so sensitive about, you know, their favorite artists going on a hiatus or taking totally. time off and you guys are people too. So it's yeah. like so important. I'm yeah. really glad that you like to hear you say all those things. And I really hope listeners like take that into consideration because mm-hmm social media especially can be so tiring and again another really? reoccurring theme for us um yeah. so that would honestly have me ask you how do you and the band kind of um deal with kind of those negative like lashbacks on social media um i think if we've ever had negative negativity that we've seen on social media for a while i kind of was like i felt like i couldn't escape it when the reality of the situation is all i have to do is close my phone just close yeah yeah like yeah I I I know that for us it's it's a lot easier with the past couple years to be able to know our limits and you know we work really hard but there has to be a time where hey this is this is really me time um and I'm still trying to find that happy medium to be honest Mm because I personally like I just I love talking to the fans. Yeah. I love being up to date on news, but there is a balance of like 
when the news is so, so, so negative and you feel like you can't do anything, that's even more of a weight, you know, that's like, you know, I, I feel like either useless or I feel helpless. Like I just want to do something. Everything seems so dark in the world. Um, that's when, like, once I noticed those thoughts coming in, I really need to just like take a moment away from social media or like, I just, you know, it, it's not helpful to any of the causes that, that we stand for to right. have that burnout. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, cause then it, it's further unhelpful, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely am still trying to find that balance because sometimes I just go and go and go, go, go. And we're doing, Hey, Violet work. And I get caught up in it. And like, and then I'm like, Oh man, I feel like I haven't slept. (laughs) (laughs) I Um, get that. (laughs) But but on another note, I genuinely do enjoy the, Hey, Violet work. Like that's what we do. I'm stoked about it. But I do think specifically with social media, I think there can be a moment where I'm like, Hey, maybe I don't need to read the comment section. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Totally understand that. that. (laughs) That's awesome. I mean, I, a great way to deal with it and take those times out because I, I'm not even half as active as you are. And I know I've got to sit down sometimes. (laughs) So I, Focusing on the new EP, um, the theme of loneliness is super um, recurrent in it. So can you tell us a little bit about why that was such a big theme on it? And what is some advice that you can give to fans and listeners to help them get through these types of times of loneliness? Yeah. um, So like you mentioned, this first EP really follows that arc of like loneliness and loss. Um and really deals with a lot of that stuff. Um, There are other songs that are going to be on the album that also deal with that stuff. But again, it kind of just goes into the the story that, you know, feeling good about yourself is not a one-way journey. It's just like, it's back, it's forth, it's up, it's down. And that's kind of how the songs are for us. But specifically with this first EP, um, I feel like, you know, I mean, it's kind of happened since I was really little, but I always kind of felt this, like, just like feeling like I was missing something. And I didn't, you know, I kind of was just like searching for it in like every person that I met, whether it was like a person that I was dating or a friend or my family or a stranger, like I was always looking for something that would make me whole without realizing it wasn't about anything in my environment. It wasn't about any person. It was that like, I need to, I needed to do things that would heal myself, you know? And I mean, it's kind of like that thing. Like, I don't really like saying someone is my other half, like two whole people have to come together and be happy together. And that's when it's going to work when you can like understand your needs, understand the other person's needs and be able to communicate those things. But anyway, again, it's not all about like relationships and everything, but specifically with we have on the first EP problems, breaking up with a friend and dear love. And so we kind of followed that that story arc of loss, specifically in dear love and breaking up with a friend. Um, Dear love is actually coming out in seven days. So that's really exciting. Um, But that one really follows that thing that I mentioned, which is trying to find that wholeness in someone else and hoping someone else is going to save you without realizing that the only person that can save you is yourself. You know, you can't get help if you don't want help, you know? Um, And so even with problems I've mentioned before, like, it sounds like a very fun, super flirty song, but you know, I wrote it at a time when I was like attracted to people's red flags. You know, I would see something that I was like, that's going to be really detrimental (laughs) to me. Let's do it. You know, it's like, it's so, it's so toxic. And I was like, how can I break out of this? And so that song was really important for us to include because it shows a different side where it's not all like, it's not all like, I feel so sad. I feel so bad, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes sometimes you do romanticize it because that's the illness in your head, you know? Um, and that's like, 
wanting someone to take care of you when they like literally are not capable of doing that. Um, Cause the only person that can is me, you know? <laughs> so yeah. we are, we, we are like scarily alike and it's awesome. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. It's really great to hear you say stuff. Like I'm getting a lot about out, out of this episode. So I'm really excited for our, oh, our listeners. So <laughs> I know we can't wait for that song to drop as well. You know, we'll be covering it. Thank you. Of course. So our wrap up for you is just, is there anything else that you can share with us um, that we can look forward to coming from you guys in the future? I know a lot of the times you can't share, but (laughs) if there's anything you can share. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. So we do have the EP coming out um, next month. So we're really excited about that. Um, And it's actually kind of fun because we are independent now. So we kind of like make the rules on like what we say and what we don't say. So that's been kind of fun (laughs) to like, we're like, oh, should we not hide that, but like almost save it for like, sometimes we like to do fan, like uh, puzzles with the fans where they kind of figure out a name or something like that. So we really like to do that stuff with them because it's very, um, uh, What's the word where they're interactive? Oh yeah, the and, I think. So yeah, yeah, and they can they can figure out what the you know what the song's about or what the song's gonna be like, what the name of it is. Um, but we do have three EPs coming out over the next few months, all leading up to the album towards the end of the year, early next year. And yeah, it's just like we're constantly filming, doing photo shoots and stuff like that, and really creating the Hey Violet world. Um, and it's even more fun now just being independent and stuff because we get to play with everything you know we're like (laughs) kids in a candy store like just having so many options with like the creativity and being able to write you know the treatments and being being able to work like one-on-one with the directors and everything like that so there's going to be those three EPs I won't say exactly when they come (laughs) out because that's fair (laughs) the first one will be in the next month or so that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I love that you make it interactive. Um, one of my favorite artists, Jaguar Twin, does the same. Mm. And it's just so much better. It just, it's, it's so, cool. so much special. I have yeah. way more fun listening to those songs and stuff because yeah. I feel like I, I'm part of it. I love it. Yeah, exactly. And like, that's the thing is like with our fans, like they really are. They, you know, yes, we write the songs and we put them out, but like they're the people listening to them and they're like who we value. Um, as our listener as our listeners as our fans as like our friends and stuff like that and I think it's just like it's just another level of letting them feel connected in in the world that we get to build you know yeah that's awesome I I think fans really appreciate feeling that connection and feeling like they're (laughs) part of it I love that Yeah. yeah kind of makes it your own I was laughing um, on your Twitter. You guys <laughs> d- were like, I think it was Apple Music, like leaked the the album. I know. <laughs> what the hell was that? So, that like a few times too. That yeah. is so rude of them. <laughs> I did laugh I'm at that. Like, I was like, oh, call them out, call them out. <laughs> yeah, and like that's happened a few times before. I was like, I don't know. I was happy like the, some of the fans get to see it or whatever, but I yeah. was like, eh. <laughs> that's not what we wanted <laughs> totally well it's very exciting that we have a lot to look forward from you guys um in the next few months we are very excited about all of it um so yeah that's it for us for today so thank you again so much for coming out and giving us the time and joining thank us you. having great conversation and giving us great advice um thank you so much so yeah We'll catch you guys next time on the Honey Podcast. Thank you.